and welcome to this tutorial on moving 3D game objects with mouse drag. Here you see we have 4 dice and we can easily move them by using our mouse drag after we press the game object. Here we are actually transforming a 2D movement into a 3D movement or vice versa. So we need a constraint. And in this video the constraint is not changing the perpendicular distance between the game object and the camera's XY plane. Here I see my game object does not change. It is perpendicular distance between its position and the XY plane of the camera. And the XY plane of the camera is represented by this cube. So here is Y direction and X direction and they create the XY plane. The cube is the child of the main camera and it has the same orientation with the camera. I can move any game object and the distance will not be changed among them. So the main camera in the orthographic projection mode and when I move my game object it is how it is look like and how it is rendered out by our camera does not change. If I were to set the projection mode to perspective mode I will see different sides of the dice and also I will see kind of different sizes and again it is what perspective does it changes how we perceive the game object from its position and to keep the system more simple I am using orthographic camera but you can use perspective camera for your projects if you would like and after that just a very quick environment walkthrough here's my camera and here's the cube for representing its orientation here's a plane for ground and also we can see the 3d movement and the shadows and I have her dice. Each dice has our move 3D behavior that moves the game object with mouse drag and also a random material color script that does what the name budget gives random colors to all the materials a game object has. If you're interested in that, I can create a video about it. And this was how our environment is working. So let's go and inspect the code. Here at the start, we require collider component from the owner of this because on mouse event requires a collider to detect the mouse press on game objects. If the game object does not have a collider, our mouse press will not be detected, but other counterparts with the colliders will continue to detect our presses. But for the disabled port collider, there will be no detection. And when it is enabled, we can easily move it, continue to move it again. So our behavior has two variables. One, main camera to store the camera main reference. And also we have camera Z distance. So this is the part that it gets a little bit tricky. For a camera to transform a 3D space to 2D space, there happen some transformations. And when you want to transform it to some kind of position, you again apply this position with the camera's method called world to screen point or screen to world point in our case. World to screen point transforms a point, a vector tree, a position from 3D space to 2D space. And screen to world point transforms a screen position to world position, such as a screen position to world position. This position transforms both through these windows actually. Here we are transforming game objects position from world space to screen space and we are storing that screen space transforms Z value in our camera Z distance. So this is a world to screen space transformed Z value of our game object and we will be using this value to reverse transform a screen position to world position and by doing so the perpendicular distance the game object and the xy plane of the camera will not be changed so the value is stored and moving with our own mouse drag event here we are calculating a screen position vector check which has mouse position x as it is x value mouse position y as it is y value and camera z distance as it is z value in screen space there is no z values z value of the mouse input for example always is zero and to reversely transform a 2d value to 3d value a word space value we need one more values and this value is the value that we already calculated at the start by the reverse transforming world space to screen space of our game object position and we are setting it to our screen position and after that we are transforming the screen position vector from a screen point to a world point using camera's screen to world point method and from now on now we have our game objects position in the world space again here is the screen space and here is the world space and we are now have our world space position for our game object and setting this value to position for our game object 
throughout the on mouse track event, all these calculated continues. This is how our behavior works. There is two points that you can tweak around with this behavior. One, very straightforward. You don't need three lines of declarations, only one line. You know, you would move this calculation to here and move all this bit move in here to here and you will get only one line of code here. And this was a very simple one. A little bit more complicated one, the one that needs more explanation is about the camera Z distance. So the calculation of camera Z distance at the start event confirms that perpendicular distance between the game object and the XY plane of the camera will not be changed throughout the runtime of the game. If there will be an expected changes between the distance between perpendicular distance between the game object and the XY plane of the camera. You shouldn't be calculating this value in the start event, but you could you should calculate this in on mouse down event here. Like for example, you could use a player controller in your scene and player controller will move the camera and the distance will be changed between the game object and the camera. Also your game object moves have a rigid body and when you release your game object the distance will be changed according to physics. And the reason that we are calculating this again only once in on mouse down event because while you are moving the game object the distance will not be changed through your on mouse track and when you release your mouse the distance will be changed and when you press down again on the game object on mouse event will be fired before on mouse track and you again calculate your camera z distance here and this is how you can tweak this for variable distance between game object and camera and also this was it for how our behavior works and could work. Let's go back to our scene and have one last demo. And yes, this was it for this video. I hope that it will be helpful in your projects. And if there is a point, please let me know in the comments down below. The transform parts a little bit tricky. I hope that I could explain them. But if there was a point not clear, let me know again in the comments down below. And if you like this video, please give it a like and consider subscribing to this channel for new videos to come. For example, for the dice series, I'm planning two more videos. Second video will be about rotating the game object with mouse drag direction. For example, when I am moving this dice to this direction, I am expecting it to be rotating around its center also. And at the last video of the dice series, we will be calculating which side of the dice looking up when it falls down to the ground. If you are interested in that kind of thing, I suggest you consider subscribing again. And yes, this was it for this video. I hope to see you in the next explorations and bye bye.